over 50% of all POCs fail. I have run POCs that never led to a deal and I don't want to ever do this again. In this video, I'm sharing my personal strategy on how to run and win a POC. Hi, my name is Sasha and I work as a senior sales engineer for a leading cloud software company. Like this video and subscribe to my channel to also help others learn from my experiences at selling enterprise software. POCs are expensive, they cost time, and time is money, but also lost opportunity to do something else elsewhere. Share the responsibility for the POC with the wider team. Cover your bases. And we do this in a so-called go-no-go meeting. This is an internal call where we present the POC plan and the business case to at least our direct managers. And this is the last gate before us committing to the POC. So it's a last chance to raise any concerns whatsoever about this POC or the whole deal. And I've been in go no go meetings where we decided to disengage this customer completely. And sometimes it's really the best decision. We have committed to doing this POC with the customer. We will rock their world, set up the POC kickoff call first thing, first day of the POC, just to make sure that everybody in the team knows exactly what they will be doing today and the next days and give a chance to the team to ask any hands-on questions. Keep it short, make sure that everybody is on the same page and we are starting the POC today. How do we sales engineers run and win POCs? A big part of the success is to have a good POC plan. If you've missed that video, go back and watch how to plan and scope a POC. When you're running the POC, the most important thing is to have control of the time because time is the only resource that cannot be recovered. And I do this by setting up short status calls or stand-up meetings every day or every other day. Here, every team member will report the status of their tasks. Your job as a sales engineer is to look out for the red flags, to look if something's going sideways. If you do feel that some team members need more support, make sure you set up immediate follow-up with them. Other stakeholders of the POC on the customer side, but also on our side, will want to know what's going on in the POC. And for this, you'll want to schedule a one hour call or maybe longer at the end of the week where you can show your task list so they can see the progress on the POC or even if it's feasible, show a live demo of the work that has been done so far. And this call is also a good opportunity to raise concerns or questions over the POC status, POC progress by you or by other stakeholders. Never wait for some calls to raise concerns. If there are concerns, there is never a better time to raise them than now. And finally, I like to set up less formal channels of communication with the POC team members. I use Slack or Teams or whatever the customer is comfortable with. And this is a great way to find out things that wouldn't otherwise have been said in the other calls. And also a big opportunity for you as a sales engineer in charge of the POC to build a rapport with the customer to start building your technical champions. Let's talk about scope creep. Have you heard of that before? This is a situation where the POC scope changes. It usually grows. The customer may be asking for more features to be tested in the POC. And this is why it's super important to get that scope nailed down in the POC planning phase and get everybody to commit to the scope because scope creep leads to blowing sales timelines, your pipeline is getting longer, your deal might slip or even never happened. You've done a really good POC planning phase and customer committed to providing resources, but the reality is that this POC investment for the customer is a investment for the future, but they have a running business they need to take care of. So sometimes they will pull resources from your POC and suddenly your POC's timelines are getting blown. The main thing is don't panic and don't make any assumptions about what's going on. You immediately need to raise this concern with your sales team and see how you tactically go about it, how to get those resources back. But also you need to think about that strategically. Why is customer suddenly not so interested in the POC? POC results readout is the last and a very important step in the POC execution. And usually it's going to be your A going through the deck, presenting the POC plan, presenting what's been done in the POC and presenting the results of the POC, how the goals of the POC have been met. And ideally for this third part, for presenting the POC results, you want someone from the customer side to talk about them because this has a much better effect than when we are presenting it. And after this meeting, your job on the POC is really done. Yeah, you can now move on to the next POC. 
However, it's very possible that our help is still going to be needed to estimate the size of that deal, meaning the monetary value of the deal. Because we were involved in the PUC, we are going to be the ones that know best how much software, hardware have to be bought by the customer so they can run it in production. And this is called sizing. And I'll talk about sizing in another video. I hope this video helps you win more PUCs. Let me know in the comments. Like this video and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Thanks for watching Better Pre-Sales. Stay healthy and stay tuned.